Hello everyone, welcome back to Football Manager 2017 with Newcastle United and you may remember last episode we were on a pretty good run of form, five wins and a draw and today we get to carry that on at home against Hull. I'd be expecting us to win this match quite comfortably, they're down in 17th place. We then have a game in the Champions League which doesn't really matter, we've already won the group with two games to spare which is pretty nice. Uh, then we've got games against West Ham and Spurs before we have a match against Sporting and then it's Fulham who are back in the Premier League this season. So a pretty good run of games. I'd expect us to get a few more wins under our belt. The game against West Ham, uh, who is second, and Spurs, who are third, is going to be quite interesting. But two teams that I think we can be beating. Um, for today's match, the only real change is in defence, where Mangala has come into partner, uh, sorry, Mamana has come into partner Mangala. Um, otherwise, the team is as they were. With the other side of the international break, so it's the 21st of November now, um, that's why the players are lacking a bit of fitness. Uh, but we should still have more than enough in the tank to overcome Hull. Pulisic with the free kick. House clears it away, but Chambers has got to the ball first. Now Mamana out on the right-hand side. Just passing the ball around. It's Witzel into Kovacic. There's Pulisic through to Vazquez. Nice little passive move, but he's hit the post. Oh, we've managed to ground, grind out another 1-0 victory. Uh, Hull without any shots on target, which is always helpful when you only have a one-goal advantage. It does mean we move up to fifth. Uh, most teams have played, but West Ham and United could still move further ahead of us. We are now just three points behind Everton, which is very interesting, given we were down in 11th just a few games ago. Quite a few changes to the team for the away match against Dinamo Kiev. It doesn't really matter. It's a dead rubber of a match. Um, so Germain is starting up top with Graham Campbell on the wings. Vinaldum and Dragomir coming into the centre of the pitch. Lucas Silva behind them. Then it's Callum Steele, Mangala, Mamana and Bemba and Murray. Four M's in a row. Wijnaldum. Four to Germain. It's Wijnaldum again out to Damari Gray. He's lost the ball. But Mbemba gets it back. Now Dragomir back to Mamana. Joel Campbell can play a pass from this position. He's still going. He goes for goal and Volkan plucks it from the sky. Dinamo passing the ball around. They've been forced out away from our goal, but it's Gonzalez. Now Antunes swings the ball in. Mangala gets it away. Gonzalez back in. We can't clear our lines. And Rai Blauka finds Schwed and it's deflected into the net. You could see that happening every time we fail to clear the ball. Gonzalez on the attack. Now Musa. It's a nice counter attack and an equally nice finish to see the game out for Dinamo. We've lost when we really shouldn't have. The team was strong enough. We had the better chances. We just couldn't take them. There is the full-time whistle. It's a result that doesn't matter, but it's still disappointing to lose. I'm hoping it won't hit our confidence too much for the next match. Well, there's a lot of changes to the team for this match. Um, Arigi back up top with Pulisic and Vasquez alongside him. Melagoni, Kovacic and Witzel in midfield with Rahman, Jones, Romano, Chambers and Murray in goal. It's a full-strength, full-fit team. Um, we are taking on high-flying West Ham, who are having an ex uh, just excellent season so far. Uh, up in second in the league, we need to get the victory, though, if we want to close down the gap with them. Kovacic, out wide with a great ball to Chambers. He sends a crossing straight away. It's come out to uh, Vasquez on the edge of the area. And <laughs> that somehow got in. That was FM physics all over. I don't know what the keeper was doing. He dived so high. The ball just trickled under him. We've got the lead. Pulisic. Shimmying past two defenders. West Ham do get the tackling. Now Lanzini launches a counter-attack. Berahino's pace couldn't be made to the use of. And Vazquez instead is in behind the defence. He sends the ball across the goal. And Ari touches it in from the six-yard line. Babaraman to Melagoni. Now Origi. Ball just cut out by Alfa. Timo Werner in a lot of space, finds Lanzini, now Berahino's effort, that was a powerful shot into the bottom corner and West Ham have got one back. Ogbonna, edge of the area, finds Timo Werner, there's a ball in and Andy Carroll of all people has equalised for West Ham. Pulisic with the corner, in towards Melagoni, Jones on the line has nodded it in, it's 3-2. 
90th minute of the match and West Ham are looking to attack, trying to get that equaliser. It's Nordvet with a first time cross and Berahino's hit the bar. Werner hits the post. Paye hits the post and we get it away. West Ham hit the post three times on the 90 minute mark. Still not over. Paye skews it wide. West Ham have been utterly robbed by us today. We are the luckiest team in history. The goal mass scramble at the end there was pretty incredible. We picked up three very good points. It closes the gap on West Ham completely. We're now level on points with them. We're still five points behind Spurs, but we've created a gap between us, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool and City. Absolutely no changes to the team that managed to squeak that victory away against West Ham. We're at home this time against league leaders Spurs. I'm hoping we can cut that gap down uh, by another three points and put us back in to title contention. A defeat today would surely leave us a little bit too far away, even though it is only December. Babarama with the throw to Melagoni. Now Kovacic, edge of the area. Great pass to Babarama. He puts it in and Vasquez nods it home and... After just 90 seconds, we've taken the lead against Spurs. Chambers intercepts the ball, finds Kovacic. There's Origi to Vasquez to Origi. What a finish from Divock Origi. 12 goals for him and we're 2-0 up. Corner from Pulisic. Cleared back out to him. He sends it in. Dyer gets it away. Now Bolo can sprint up the pitch. He's beaten Witzel. Now Eriksen. Finds Coutinho in a good area. He can pull it back across goal. There's Guedes, but he's put it wide. Guedes. Finds Dyer. There's Eriksen. He's got Mbolo ahead of him. And Mamana has committed a foul. He's pushed Mbolo. And it's a penalty to Spurs. Mbolo's penalty is scored. Murray went the right way, but couldn't stop it. Just hanging on to the ball. Finds Kovacic. There's Vasquez to Origi. It's gone in. The ball just spins in off the post there. It bounced out, but there was too much spin on the ball, which carried it over the line. Murray just looking to count down the seconds. Keen plays it forward to Vasquez. And there's a full-time whistle. We've got another stunning victory in the league. A real upturn in form for us. We've beaten the league leaders and closed the gap on them to just two points. We are in the title race for sure. Our final Champions League group game is at home against Sporting. It's another match that doesn't matter after we already won the group. So Jermaine is starting up top with Vinaldum Campbell on the wings. It's Vilhena, Melagoni and Silva in the centre with Rahman Jones, Keane Chambers in the back and then Ketchel in goal. Baba Rahman, forward to Vilhena. There's Wijnaldum up the field. Melagoni with a bit of space, finds Chambers brilliantly. Chambers sends the ball in and Jermaine's there with the header, as he always is, to put us 1-0 up. There is a full-time whistle. It's a good 1-0 victory. We were never really in any trouble. It was all about whether we'd actually get the goal or not. Um, but a good win means that we finish with 15 points in the group. Just that one disappointing defeat. We were 8 points clear of everybody else in the group. That's more points uh, than anybody else actually managed to get. Our final match of the episode is away from home against Fulham. Uh, big changes to the team as we go back to our strongest 11. Melagoni surviving alongside Rahman Jones and Chambers from the last game. Otherwise, it's all changed as we get, look to get back on our league um, run. We've been doing very, very well. If you take out that defeat in the Champions League, we've won pretty much every game since that little run of three defeats in the league. Um, We've got some very difficult matches coming up after this Fulham game against Liverpool and then City. But then we have another nice little run as we look to push up the table. Uh, a win today could do us wonders uh, for increasing the gap over the teams such as Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool and Man City who are all struggling this season. Chambers has robbed all Brighton. Now it's Vazquez. Just about keeps that ball. Does play it inside to Kovacic. Now Witzel. To Melagoni. There's Chambers on the right hand side. Somehow still has a ball and has found a Rigi at the near post who touches it home. Kovacic to Chambers. Into Vasquez. 
skips the tackle, finds Melagoni, and he finds that near post again. 2-0 now, both goals going in at that hard and low point that the keeper struggles to find. Vazquez on the right flank, keeps the ball in, plays it over, and there's a foul in the box on Origi, we've got a penalty. Witzel stepping up to take the penalty, does score it, it's 3-0 before half time and we're surely home and dry. Origi stuns the ball out wide to Pulisic, who's fouled by Sessegnon, we've got another penalty. This time it's Melagoni with the penalty, and he does score it straight in the top corner for 4-0. Concha, across to Azuni, now Josebed finds the Harvey. Ball slipped through for Vasquez, he's got a man in the centre. Pulls it back to Josebed on the edge of the area, and Kenny hammers it home. It's a very well-worked goal from Fulham. It's another very good away win for our team. Against a team that we should really be beating quite comfortably anyway. But it means we're now up to second, which is a long way away from our 11th place where we were not too long ago. We're also now 10 points clear of Chelsea and Man City, which is pretty good going. Well, at the end of this episode, we've left ourselves in a fantastic position overall. Uh, Man United can still catch us, as can Everton. It could push us further down the table. But we'll still be in the top four, regardless of what's hap what happens in those matches. Uh, looking ahead to the next episode, we've got big games against Liverpool and City, who are both struggling 9th and 11th, respectively. Then it's Stoke, Swansea, Bournemouth in the FA Cup, and Huddersfield to finish it off. It's a very good run of matches. We need to get through these two tough ones. Uh, I'd expect us to lose at least one of them, but we're on pretty good form at the moment. If we can keep it up, we've got every chance of remaining in the title race. But that will be all for this episode. If you want to see how we got on in the title race, please do subscribe to the video, like the video uh, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, and until next time, see ya!